All right, we ready back there? All right. All right, good evening. If you have a hymn book, uh, let's turn to page 546, uh, and let's stand and sing that good old song, Love Lifted Me. Welcome those that are tuning in by the way of social media tonight. Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me now safe. Am I love lifted me? Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. when. Nothing else could help. Love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give. Ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live. Ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true. Merits my soul best song, faithful loving service to to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted. Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, souls in danger look above. Jesus completely says, He will lift you by His love. Out of the angry way, he's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Nothing else could have love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help love lifted me. Amen. Good job. Praise the Lord. Thank you for singing. Praise the Lord. It was love that lifted you from where you were and put you where you are today. Praise the Lord. Again, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. We're getting that some good summer rain out there. I know some of us got wet coming in, but it'd be better than being in a drought. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for the rain. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome to West Franklin on Wednesday night prayer meeting. And we're going to take some prayer requests. Do we have any spoken requests to start off this morning here in the sanctuary? Any? Mm-hmm. Yes. Beth? Michaela and Jennifer. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Any other? Bro Jimmy? Yes, Miss Jenny. Yes. Claudette's sister and Miss Jenny Grayson. Yes, remember Claudette? Yes, Miss Wilsey also. Yes, Shelly, absolutely. Shelly Grayson. And, uh, okay, Barbie, yep. Roseanne, she'll be going in for a root canal in the morning, is that correct? Bless her heart, let's remember her. Yes, anyone else? Brother Roger, keep him in our prayer. I want to thank y'all to have a job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, pray. I was on the phone with that guy giving me the job. Somebody else called and tried to give me another job. Oh, wow. Well, it does. The Lord's always on time. Always. I'm so thankful. Amen. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's, let's read those that have come in. Uh, from social media and those that may be tuning in. Uh, Ricky Flowers uh, wrote in, please pray for him. The Lord knows all about that. Uh, Chad Lingerfelt, please pray for my dad, Jim uh, Lingerfelt. He has throat cancer. Um, Jenny Carson wrote in, she's asking prayer again for Jenny Grayson um, and Pauline Stewart, um, also for Jerry. Uh, her son Jerry and uh, her nephew uh, Stanley and uh, Stephanie Jackson uh, wrote in our family needs prayer. We desperately need the Lord's help in a situation. We're uh, definitely praying for Stanley and Stephanie. Uh, Terry Ziegler, our country, uh, and uh, Terry's pastor continue to pray for Brother Eric Sellers as he's dealing with some health issues uh, Sandra Camp Jenkins, uh, Sydney and family, uh, Preston, Beverly, our youth, uh, her family, um, Bruce and Brenda and family, uh, Pastor Gene Alley wrote in praying for uh, an awakening. Amen to that. Uh, Mabel Pruitt, please pray for my sister, health problems. Lynn Compton is asking for prayers for a place to live. Uh, Renee McDonald wrote in, please pray for Edward Rang. He has been fighting cancer for almost four years. He's receiving chemo treatment. Again, thank you all. Uh, Connie Williams wrote in, pray for Attorney General Barr and our Supreme uh, Court Justice System, our President, and our country. Amen to that. Uh, Eloise Byers, pray for the uh, White family. And the loss of uh, one of their loved ones, healing uh, for her daughter, Amanda. Uh, Roseanne wrote in, Shelly Grayson uh, and Jenny and uh, the family. Uh, Teresa uh, Grayson wrote in, uh, my husband, Gary Wilmoth. Uh, he's having her hernia surgery right now and uh, pray for his recovery. Uh, Maxwell Jewell. Uh, pray for me. I am con conducting a crusade this month in 28-29 August, and uh, he needs prayers. We'll pray for him. Uh, as one of our Facebook friends from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Zimbabwe. Uh, Elaine Williams, unspoken. Uh, Connie Williams uh, uh, wrote in, still praying for everyone. Uh, Dwayne Heilman wrote in. Uh, remember Fallon, we're praying for Fallon, uh, Jenny Grayson, continue to pray for her, pray for Dan, um, Jesse and Hannah, uh, Martin wrote in, remember uh, me and my family, also a praise report, he had a fever last week and um, had to take a COVID test and that was negative and uh, thank the Lord for that, uh, uh, Virginia Davis, uh, Unspoken in my family, Joanne Myers, unspoken praise report for a friend uh, who is cancer free. Uh, Kathy Poteet Wilson, prayers for healing for Aunt Jenny, continued prayers for Shelly uh, and Harold 
Hooper it said that he is joining us in prayer for all of these needs. Is there anyone else? Yes, remember Brother Sid? Uh, Beth. Yes. Yes, yes. We'll be starting that also with Zoe, remember me. Uh, I'm not worried so much about Zoe as I am <laughs> me. So I desire you prayers for that. That's right. Uh, amen. Yes, remember the Fox family. Also, um, let's continue to pray for uh, the Savior's Cross broadcast, uh, the Word of Life uh, broadcast. Brother Jamie is involved in that, him and his son-in-law. Uh, remember, our church service uh, this coming Sunday will be outside. Um, the church uh, the service will start at 10 a.m. Um, this coming Sunday morning. Uh, so we'll pray for the Lord's uh, will on the weather. And uh, continue to pray for inspiration for inmates, the Bible ministry, and um, just all of the uh, pastors and preachers that are uh, trying to navigate through this COVID and through all of these things that uh, the Lord knows about. So let's, let's pray for that. Manny O, continue to pray for him. Uh, yep, Manny O was 20 years old today. Today's his birthday. And I want to continue to pray for him. And yes, Brother Jamie I continues to, to have trouble with those kidney stones. We're praying for your brother. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yes, pray for Brother Cody. Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. Those are the two that I've got to remember. They're having a tent revival. Yes. Remember, there's a lot of meetings that are going on, revival efforts and, and things that are going on. And also, um, it'll be here before you know it, September the 19th, our fifth, um, what we call our Gaston Crusade effort will be here on the church grounds. So um, be, be praying about that and tell folks about it. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Brother Larry, would you pray for us tonight? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. And Lord, we pray for all of these requests. Lord, we lift them up to you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know, Lord, that we cannot do anything in of ourselves, Lord, but you are the great physician. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will bring, Lord, this healing, Lord, that is needed, Lord, in these lives. Lord, you are the one, Lord, that can heal. Lord, you are the great one. Lord, we magnify your name. We lift you up, Lord, for, Lord, no one is like you. No one has the power that you have. No one has the wisdom and knowledge that you have. Lord, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you bless, Lord, all of the children, Lord, and all of the young people, Lord, that uh, will be in school, Lord, and is starting, Lord, uh, these classes, Lord, at home. Lord, uh, give them grace, Lord, and give them, uh, just help them, Lord, to be able to get through this. All of uh, those, Lord, that are doing distance learning, Lord, and learning from home. And even, Lord, those that are in the schoolhouse, Lord, we pray for them. Lord, you know the needs that we have. Lord, you know the unspoken ones, Lord. Lord, we lift them, them up to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we're expecting, Lord, because of our faith, Lord, we place in you. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, lift us up. Lord, I pray for West Franklin Baptist Church, Lord, that you'll help us. Lord, help us, Lord, to lift you up. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right.
All right, praise the Lord. All right, Miss Zoe, you come sing for us. It's in the hymn all day. What you playing, Rod? Uh, I forgot. What's the name of that song? Yeah, Sheltered. Sheltered, yeah. Mm-hmm. her to sing and that really wasn't the key that she was comfortable in but she was a trooper and got through it amen praise the lord amen if you have your bibles tonight uh, turn back with me into the old covenant book of genesis genesis chapter number 15 genesis chapter number 15 
I want to use the time tonight, Lord's will, to continue our series on the journey of faith. And the name of the message tonight I would like to use is when the Lord has to reinforce His promises. There's times on our Christian journey that discouragement comes in. Every once in a while, fear will come in. Every once in a while, the devil, he'll throw his two cents worth in. But then God will show up. God will show up and he'll reinforce his promises. And he's so good to do that. And uh, again, the Lord wants us to know that we are on this wonderful journey. This journey of serving him and loving him and walking through this world with him. So Genesis chapter 15 Verses 1 through 6, if you'd like to stand and honor uh, the word of the Lord. The Bible says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And the famous verse 6, And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this word. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you one more day. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to call upon your name one more time. Lord, I ask you, Lord, tonight, Lord, that you will teach us, Lord, and, and, and guide us, Lord, through the Word of God. Lord, as we are truly on this journey of faith, Lord, you tell us, Lord, for the just shall live by faith. And without faith, Lord, it is impossible to please you. Lord, we understand these things. Lord, help us. Lord, even, Lord, as it is said in your word, Lord God, help our unbelief. Help us, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd forgive us, Lord, for anything, Lord, that's offensive to you. Lord, and hide me, Lord, in the shadow of your great work. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Chapter 15 of Genesis has been said to be one of the most important chapters in the Old Testament. For in it we see the great revelation of justification by faith. And I may add this if I, if I can. Understanding uh, justification by faith. Church, this should be the pursuit of every believer in his or her journey in the Christian life. What is justification by faith? And we are learning about that, and we should learn about that as we go forward in our life serving the Lord. But we need to know right off and understand that we are justified freely by His grace through faith in Him and His finished work. In other words, when we believe in God's finished work, And this is what he's trying to show Abram, and later he'll change his name to Abraham. This is what he's trying to show the patriarch. He's trying to get Abram to see how justification works through the building of the altars and through trusting him. It's no different back then than it is today, or today as it is back then. Abraham was called upon to trust God. God gave him a promise. He gave him a promise. Well, he gave him several promises, but he gave him the promise, which was the promised seed would be born through his loins. 
uh, Abram at that time was old and stricken in years. He had a wife named Sarai. She was old and she was barren. And the odds of this happening was completely null in the eyes of man. God asked Abraham to believe. And when Abraham believed, it was counted unto Abraham as righteousness. And God give Abraham his own righteousness. And it's the same thing today, church, as you and I, as we walk on our Christian journey. God said, for a child will be born. He said that a baby would be born in a manger. And he said he would forgive his people from their sins. He said he would be the Messiah. He would be the chosen one. He would be the redeemer of all mankind. And when we believe that, And we're called on by God to believe His Word and believe in His promises. And they are precious promises. When we believe in Him, it is accounted to us as righteousness. And that is called justification by faith. I like that. Uh, Julie and I and Elizabeth were talking the other night concerning justification And Julie had heard somewhere, and I like that, that justification, you can take the word just if I had never sinned. In other words, the imputed righteousness of God. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter where you've been. Man may go ahead and dig your grave. Man try to maybe shove you in it and say it's over. But when you are justified by God... When you and I are justified freely by His grace, we are no longer under man's ways nor under law. We are under grace. And let me tell you something. The law kills. The letter kills. But grace, hallelujah, will raise from the dead. I'm surprised how quickly we are to condemn our brothers and sisters in Christ that maybe have had something come along in their life, something they've had to deal with in their life, and the brethren automatically nail the coffin shut and say they're done. Let me tell you something. When that believing, when that believer, Brother George, calls upon God, and God does not have a certain position that you and I have to get in to call on Him. We can call on Him from the pit. We can call on Him from anywhere. No matter what's going on in our life, we can call upon God and express faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work. And it is as if we have never failed. Glory to God. And that's one of the great things about being a Christian. Believing God. uh, Believing God, church, in all things. That's what God wants us to do. Believe Him not only in all things, but believe Him for all things. You know, that is not an easy habit to get in. It's not an easy habit to believe God in all things and to believe God for all things. Because what you see a lot of times does not line up with what you're looking for God to do. But that's why it's called faith. That's why it's called walking by faith and not by sight. That's the journey that Abram was taken on. Even from day one, day one when Abram was called from Ur of the Chaldees, day one he says, leave your family, leave your land, leave the life that you once knew and follow me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Abram had sense enough to get up and go. I'm going to tell you what. I, I'm, I know there's a lot of times that I don't have sense enough <laughs> to get up and follow him. And I, I need help. And I, I, I'm glad that God will reinforce from time to time his promises in, in my life. Now, if we remember over the last weeks, we've saw Abram continuing in his own journey of faith. He had started his journey by believing the revelation that God had began to show him. God had promised through his loins that the promised seed would be born. Uh, Abram began building altars everywhere he went, and that in itself, church, is a revelation or was a revelation. God began to reveal to him 
what justification entailed. It would entail a spotless sacrifice. There would have to be a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Not an animal, but a man that would have to pay for the sins of all mankind. A man would not only have to die for the sins of all mankind like a spotless lamb as he had been slain, but also a man that would live 33 and a half years on this earth not sinning one time on my behalf. And as we believe in that, Abraham, so Abraham, he was, he was developing. You know, uh, Brother Jamie, I, I believe that it takes time to develop faith. And you just don't wake up. You know, I, I know the Lord says that He gives to every man a measure of faith. But I, I believe as, and I, and I understand what the Lord means by that, but my faith has to be constantly developed and constantly nurtured. I, I have to have, that my faith has to be, I have to engage and God has to engage me. And one of the greatest things to build faith is the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You say, well, what about the Word of God? The Word of God is about Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the spotless Lamb from the foundation of the world, looking at Him, believing in Him, applying what He has done in your life and my life will keep us along the way. Praise the Lord. Now, remember in our narrative, if you will, Lot... His nephew, if you remember, he had pitched his tent towards Sodom. And a confederation of rogue kings, fast forwarding, I believe there was four, they had taken the inhabitants of Sodom along with Lot and his family. Abram got word. And by faith, Abram took 318 of his men and slaughtered four kings and four kingdoms. He recovered Lot and all the inhabitants and goods of Sodom. The king of Sodom met him and offered him all of the spoils that he had taken, but Abram was high on faith and he refused. He said, I won't even take a shoestring from you, fella lest you say that you made me rich. In other words, God was His portion. The Lord was His portion. Abraham went in on victory and was met in the valley of the kings. And remember that as the story progressed, he was met by Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God. I mean, Abraham's faith, it, man, it was cranking. I mean, he was on a mighty, mighty, he was on a, tr a tremendous parade of victories. Abraham, through these great victories, he was put on the map, so to speak. And this is relevant to us. Other kings, no doubt, began to hear of Abram and his God. When you start the journey of faith, the devil is going to raise his head. When you make up your mind, when you make up your mind, and when I make up my mind, we make up our mind, that we are going to quit fooling around with religion. We're going to quit fooling around with casual Christianity. We're going to trust the Lord. We're going to trust Him when we're weak, we're going to trust Him when we're strong. We're going to trust Him when we're broke. We're going to trust Him when the wallet's full. We're going to trust Him when the cupboard's empty. We're going to trust Him when the cupboard's full. When you make a, when you make a dive in this direction, and there was no doubt that Abram had did that because Lot had taken and set his eyes toward Sodom and, Lot, and Abram was saying, Lord, I'll take what's left. Let me tell you what, even if you do have to take what's left, if God gives it to you, it's better than what the world can give. It's better than what he, he could give. But Abraham, through these great victories, uh, the, I believe that some of the other kings began to hear. 
because there's something in the narrative of the Scripture here that makes a turn. And this is where we get to verse 1. Notice what happened next in the text. The Bible says, after these things. Now that's referring back. It's looking back to everything that happened in chapter 14. And the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not. Now this has to proclaim that fear had set in. It could have been after the slaughter of these kings. Again, they, maybe Abram had made some enemies. Maybe words from his enemies were making it back into the ears of Abram. And I, I would like to say this by way of personal experience. Uh, uh, Preacher Jamie and I was talking about this on the broadcast. We were mentioning this. Uh, often times, often, often, after great, great victories, great, great victories in the Lord, Satan will come. How many of you here at church, and maybe how many of you listening by the way of social media, and we talked about this Tuesday night, God will have one of them shout her down services, and the Holy Ghost of God is, is just brewing into place, and everybody leaves here on Sunday, and they've got help, and the Holy Spirit has, has just had His way, and whatever the, whatever the need, the need was met, and we just left here, and man, there was a great victory one. And then Monday. Monday. Monday, Monday. <laughs> the, Holy, the Holy Spirit, though, has not left. The Holy Spirit has not went anywhere, but oftentimes our faith in the promise, it will provide great fruit. Again, and, the, and then, the, then Satan will often use the spirit of fear. The Lord told Abram, fear not. He said it for some reason. He said it for a reason. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, most of you know it. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's almost like, now we're still on our journey of faith, and this is relevant, I want you to hear this tonight. Fear, fear and doubt are almost like twin brothers. When fear sets in, doubt comes with it. And that's exactly what Satan's tactic is. Satan, in his tactics, he wants fear to move in. It, 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 it is, and listen, I know that I can get an amen here. Being in the grip of fear is no fun. It is no fun at all. I was reading behind one commentator that suggests that the spirit of fear, and I believe this, I believe the spirit of fear is, as the scripture says, I believe it's a spirit. I believe the spirit of fear is a personality. I believe the spirit of fear is actually a part of the personality of Satan himself. And it's a, it's a trick. It's a trick that the devil has been using since the beginning of time. On our journey of faith, he'll throw fear in the mix. The Lord would have us to know, beloved. And this is not a... I won't sound in the wrong way, but there is a spirit world. There is a spirit world. A Christian needs to understand that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. We wrestle not against physical things that we see, but the greatest attack on our mind is the mind. The greatest attack is the attack, the attack from Satan on our mind. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. This, 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 this. And then fear sets in and doubt comes along with it. And it'll drive you. See, Satan again, and, and this is not original with me, but thank God for the truth. Satan could care less if you're a millionaire as long as he steals your faith. 
if He gets your faith, if He pulls your faith away from you, if He pulls my faith away from me, He can do with me anything He wants. Praise the Lord. That's the truth. There is a spirit world, but I'm going to tell you this. My Lord has a solution. And anything, anything that Satan throws at you, the Lord is up to the task. He, he can't, Satan cannot, he cannot stand toe-to-toe with our Lord. He cannot do it. Praise the Lord. And I, you know, what, whatever that comes our way, see, I know that it's hard, because it must be hard, because it happens to me, and, and, and the, the, Satan wants to use this fear to, to, to cripple me. But the, the same thing, the same thing, the Lord, what the Lord was doing to Abram on his journey of faith, as he was teaching Abram to trust in him, And he was teaching Abram to build these altars. That's the same thing he he had to do. Whenever Abram's faith would wax, would wax cold, or when when Abram's faith was misplaced, or whether Satan threw him, threw him a counterfeit, whatever the case may be, God always had, always had to take Abram back to the altar. Now the altars that you and I have been looking at in Genesis 12, 13, 14, and 15 is not, we need to hear this, it's not this altar. That's not the altar referred to in the Scripture. But, I don't want to confuse anyone, when you come down here, in essence, you are going here. And that is where your faith and God had to take Abram back to the altar. That's why Abraham in his journey and the father of our faith was called the altar builder. Let me tell you something. No matter what happens to us, no matter what, no matter what, even if we can't think straight and we don't know what to do and we're, we're so out of it in our minds Run to the cross. Run to the cross. Run back to the altar. Run back to the altar. And what happens when you run back to the altar? You see the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and you see defeat in the eyes of Satan. He'll tuck his tail and run because he respects the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. That is... That's the faith life. You don't live for God, friend, just on Sunday. You've got it wrong. It's wrong. You've been told wrong or you've heard wrong or something. The journey of faith, brother Jimmy, is every day. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The journey of faith. I want to tell you, Our Lord, our Lord, I'm reminded in the great 61st 61st chapter of Isaiah, He says in this, in verse 3, He says, to appoint unto them. This is this, this, for 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 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He hath anointed me. This is, this is that Scripture. And as it moves in to verse 3, this is why Jesus came, glory to God. This is what happened on the cross of Calvary. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the, joy, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness planted by the waters, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. Praise the Lord. For the sake of time, notice what what God told Abram next. I love this. He told Abram, God... Now the Bible says here that Abram was in a vision. 
God told Abram. He's, and Abram's still in this. It seems that God's preaching him a sermon. It seems like God's, God's reinforcing. Come on, brother. Don't give up now. Don't give up now. Don't quit. Don't quit now. He said, when Satan comes your way, fear comes your way, do not fear what man can do to you. Because I am your shield. I am your shield. That's what he told him right here. He said, I am your shield. I am your shield. I love this. I love what the psalmist David said in Psalm 27. He wrote it this way. He said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Listen now, for in the time of trouble He shall hide me in His pavilion in the secret of His tabernacle. Shall He hide me? He shall set me upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in His tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. That's how you live. That's how you live. That's how you live. There's... It is so sad. It is so sad that we have folks that don't believe God to this extent. It's sad. It's sad that people in the church pew they won't they they think they think I, I was just that preacher hopping around. Yeah, come on, brother. That's just that preacher spitting. Come on. They 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 don't they they I don't I don't know. Maybe Satan has how do, hey glory to God. We need to pray. Yeah. We need to pray for the church. That the church will understand that we are on a journey, glory to God. We're on a journey. We're pilgrims here. This is not our home. We have a heavenly mansion waiting on the other side. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Christians. All they want, all they want is a get out of hell ticket. That's all I'm interested in, preacher. I don't know that junk you talk about. Man, man alive. I want him. I want him. I want him. Hallelujah. I want him. Notice, notice what else the Lord said. Notice next. He said, Abram, I am thy shield. Brother Jamie and I, we were talking about this also. He said, I am thy exceeding great reward. In other words, Abram, you still got me. You still got me. I want to say something to our hearts tonight. In this journey of faith, it's more often, it's more often than not, here's the way we are. We get our eyes on the reward and get them off of the rewarder. I, we think we know what we need. People think, we think we know what we need, so therefore we chase the reward, whatever it is. Whatever it is, we chase the reward, even if it is a promise. There's nothing wrong with believing in the promise and chasing that, but there is much more to the rewarder if we will sometimes get our eyes off of the reward and get our eyes on the rewarder. Apostle Paul said to know Him and the fellowship of His sufferings. To know Him. The, the, the psalmist said a day, a day in His presence is worth more than 10,000 just a being in His presence. 
a, 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 a child of God that seeks the face of the Lord, He's going to show you. And when He shows you, your faith is going to soar. The rewarder, he, God told Abram, I am your reward. I am your shield. Sometimes we, George, you follow me? Sometimes we get our eyes off of God as God is just the giver. We're after God for what He can give and what we can get. And we, but we miss fellowshipping with Him. When we, we miss spending time with Him. How many of you here can, can say amen when you've been in your prayer closet? And it's really nothing, no emergency. It's really, it's just a, it's just a, just a time in the prayer closet. You start calling on Him. And the Holy Ghost moves in. His presence. There is nothing like it. There is nothing like being in the presence of God. We don't understand it because it's overwhelming. Because our pride won't allow us to understand it. But listen, it is the Creator manifesting Himself to the creation. It's the Creator manifesting Himself to me. I'm created. I did not create myself. I have nothing within myself. I have even no goodness within myself. There is nothing in me that is good. But hallelujah, when glory to God, when He manifests Himself to me, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like being in His presence. All of this... All of this church is part of the journey. It's part of the journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want, I want you to I want you to I want you to notice something. Hebrews chapter eleven, verse six. I, I want you to Jamie, have you noticed this in this verse? I was looking at it today. The Scripture says, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. We, we understand that. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. It did not say He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek the reward. It really didn't say He is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks the rewarder of the war, reward, so to speak. You see, you're following me? In other words, God is going to... God, see, when we want to be with Him, when we want to adore Him, when we want to praise Him, when we want Him to fellowship with us, He comes into our lives and comes into where we are in our time of need and begins to manifest Himself. And see, some, some of us say, I don't make no sense. Well, no, it don't, really. But the only thing I can tell you is, is that that is how that is how the Apostle Paul began to praise him while he was in prison. He was, he, he was in chains, no doubt, in a dung hill. Him and Barnabas. And they began to sing praises. See, when you seek Him, He's enough. He's enough. When we began to seek Him and praise Him, all of this, all of this will engulf us. You know, very few people again seek the Lord for who He is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice next in verse 2. I'm running out of time. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? He still hadn't seen it, evidently. He was still... 
God had done said, hey, I'm your, I'm your shield. I'm your reward. Well, God, just tell me how you're going to do it. Tell me how you're going to do it. Because the way I see it, the way I see it, there's no one in my house to be an heir, but a servant that was born in my house. So the way I see it, I, Lord, what are you going to give me? What, what are you going to give me? Seeing, seeing God, seeing that I go childless, it ain't happened yet. I know that you told me. But I don't know whether I believe it or not. Faith. That's the way it happens to us every day. That is a perfect picture of you and I because, because fear will come in, doubt will come in, and then, and then we take our eyes off of the promise we take our eyes off. And you know, I wonder what uh, Abram thought. It hadn't been, I don't know how long it had been. It hadn't been maybe a week or two or three months. He just slaughtered four kings. And we need to keep in mind that them 318 men, they were cowboys. They weren't warriors. They were cattle herders. They were not built for war. But God, God took them. That's another message in itself. God will take the least of these and push back the enemy. Glory to God. God, God, let's, let me say this. God uses the most unlikely for his purpose. The, the most unlikely. The one, the one that is, the one that is uh, marred. The one that has a, like a pot with a crack in it. That's what God chooses. That's the kind that God chooses. Abram worshipped and built moon gods. That, that, that's the kind that God uses. So I said that to say this. If God has spoke to your heart, if He spoke to your heart, Brother Jimmy, about something that He's called you to do, that He's called you to do it, there's no devil in hell is going to stop you. Because God has called you to it. And the God that calls you to it will take you through it. Abram, they wasn't, those kings, they could have been 40 kings. God had already laid His hand on the man. He had already made a promise. He had already told him, hey, through your loins, through your seed, all of the earth is going to be blessed. Those odds, those odds, odds, God, God don't look at odds. He don't, he don't, we look at the deck and see how it's stacked. Say, oh no, Lord, the deck's stacked against me. He's got four aces and I got a pair of nines. That's the way man thinks. But God had already called you. The Lord, the, anything that the Lord says He'll do, He's going to do it. And He'll perform. He'll perform that which He says. Now, let's see if we can finish up if we can. We see here, Abram, Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, 
one born in my house is mine, mine heir. And we see here that Satan has him in a mess. He starts rehashing the whole thing. Sarah is barren and old. I'm old. Even starts to question God. Notice verse 4. Thank the Lord. He does not give up on us. Praise the Lord. He's with me in weakness. He, hallelujah. Verse 4 says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thine own bowels, shall be thine heir. And I love verse 5. He said, Abraham, come here a minute. Let's go outside in the backyard. <laughs> I want to show you something. He said, look up. Look up at the sky. And there old Abram. And I know it had to have been one of those clear, crystal clear, majestic nights. And there's no doubt that the... Hallelujah. There's no doubt because God God orchestrates things. Nothing is happen chance. Nothing is coincidence with Him. There's no doubt when He walked out in the yard, the mighty Milky Way had come in view. Notice what He said. Notice what He said. He said, and He brought Him forth abroad and said, look now toward the heaven. And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, Though shall thy seed be. The most famous, one of the most famous verses in the Old Testament, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and counted it to him for righteousness. Church, I'll say this and we'll close. You and I. We're saved by grace through faith. But we also live every other day by grace through faith. It's a daily thing. And God will remind you. And He'll remind us that His promises are true. And His word is yea and amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank You for this time. Lord, thank You, Lord, for teaching us. Lord, help us, Lord, to be able to walk, Lord, by faith and not walk by sight. Lord, let us understand, Lord, that your finished work on Calvary has opened up to us, even the Heavenly Father Himself, that we can fellowship with Him. Lord God, help us, Lord, in the days ahead as we continue our journey of faith. And Lord, we, we take no credit we take no credit for the victories. We take no credit, Lord, for the great things that happened, Lord, in our life. But, Lord, we cast them back at Your feet. Lord, even as crowns, Lord, that we will receive one day, we'll cast them, Lord, back at Your feet. Lord, we love You and thank You, Lord. And we pray for those, Lord, that are watching by social media. We pray for our church members, our church family, Lord, that may be sick. Lord, we continue to pray for them. We also pray, Lord, for that lost sinner that may be watching and they even could be here in this, in this building tonight, Lord, that may not know You. They can call upon You. They can, you say, Lord, in Your Word, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, we pray, Lord, that if there is one lost listening, that they'll call upon You and start their very own journey of faith. My, 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 Lord, we thank You. What a great journey it is. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. Amen.